is this? We've actually got Tiger Woods on the camera. Do, just do this. Before we start the podcast. So have you seen that? Have you seen the episodes? No, I've not watched any. It's good, man. I watched one of them. It's good. I watch very, very little. I should have known. You can go. I should have known that you must have at some point in time either they half DC at the start finish or just really. Because the clubs in that bag are way too small. Well, those clubs? Way too small. What to play with? Yeah, they're like this big. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, welcome to another episode of ASM Scholarships Podcast. Um, you just heard myself and Elric talking about golf club sizes. Today is all about golf scholarships and how you can get a golf scholarship. Um, and Elric is probably the best man to talk about that with myself. Because you are, Elric, a... Former college golf coach. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> college golf coach. Did it for just over eight years, I think. Eight yeah. years. Yeah. Just over eight years, and I played for five. I played for five because um, there was a year in the middle there where I wasn't eligible because I transferred to the wrong place because of bad information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I ended up in in Oklahoma for a year. Wonderful place. Wonderful people. Just wasn't really what I was looking for um, mm. and so then ended up transferring back to sunny South Florida and super happy so did that for five and then kind of got into coaching soon afterwards and yeah and gave all of that up to come and come work here come and look at you all day yeah you, you <laughs> so you were just at the in, in uh, Colorado yeah division one team mm -hmm. um, how is it different in Colorado say to Florida well the very first thing you're gonna see is and here is obviously the weather yeah right? yeah from a golfing standpoint, it's awesome in Colorado because it's so high up in altitude, the golf ball never comes down. Just yeah, goes you can miles. hit it yeah. yeah, But no, um, right from the get-go, it's just going to be different weather-wise. Um, yeah. You need to be, you need to like some different weather. You need to like seasons. Uh, luckily, though, for college golf, and a perception that a lot of people have about cold weather states is that it snows all the time, right? Yeah. Which is actually a lie, seeing as the state of Colorado has more sunshine than any, than any other state in the country. But what would you say about, because obviously I went to Iowa, right? I felt like it didn't snow all the time, but it definitely snowed, I'd say, from October until like April. Like we, we were quite a lot under snow. Well, we had a bad winter too, but like the players on the team told me like normally from November to February is like the bad time, but it was quite a long time. It absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. The only saving grace there is that from about the middle of November until the middle of February, there's very little college golf that goes on. In yeah, that's true. We did we did homework. We got more of our class done. Well, that and now a yeah. lot of and now a lot of kids go home, right? Mm. So you go home first week in December and you come back yeah. the middle of January. So you you skip a long big portion of, of that cold weather. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of the really really good schools. A lot of schools with funding, they'll just hop on private planes and fly down to Florida every weekend. That's true. We did that. We actually went to Florida. We went to Texas uh, for training sometimes. But it's only like you can do it a week at a time because you got class as well. You got classes as yeah. well. I mean, at Colorado State, I know the guys flew down to um, Arizona numerous times yeah. before the season, would before the actual playing season of tournaments would start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once and that's why it's so crucial. To pick a place yeah. where you know that you can make and play in the traveling team. Yeah. Because once you get in that traveling team, those tournaments are all being played in good weather situations. Yeah. And you're almost never home. You're yeah. always on the road and you're always playing and practicing. So So like like now you've kind of given up coaching, you're coming into kind of recruitment full time with us, which I'm super excited about. Because I've known you for what, must be what, five years? Four or five. Four yeah. or five. Because I remember when, um we were just discussing this today about I think it was Charlotta. Mm -hmm. um, when we were recruiting her from Holland, we contacted your Florida Tech. We were working with like Barry in Boston. I know they were interested in her. I think mm -hmm. it was the first time we may have had a chat when you got into coaching with, with that university. So I didn't work it with might you. Have been, yeah. Where were you before that? Nor Northwood. I played at Northwood. Well, now oh, you guys played, Northwood. played there. Oh right, right. So was that your first coaching job? Florida Tech. Florida yeah. Tech. Right. So we, we nearly got her to you. You nearly did. And then I remember the, the other time where and we then didn't... you nearly got St. Derrick yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a bunch of nearlies. So but I love nearlies with you. And then they ended up winning somewhere else. <laughs> but in all fairness, though, they did find schools, which yeah. is what this thing is about. They, they both right. got full rides they as well. Great scholarships. Yeah. Um, 
They went yeah, to Arizona. Centauri went to, to your competitors to Arizona. Arizona. Which I felt really bad about because I know how badly you wanted him. But again, I don't work for you, I work for the kids. Absolutely. Right, so Absolutely. it's what they want. Um, well, camera action here, just lose a bit of camera. No, it's bad. Um, no in, in both of those instance, instances, yeah. they didn't end up at my institution, but they found phenomenal places to go yeah. play college golf at. Yeah. Basically, what was exactly what they were looking for. Yeah. Um, that's why it's so clutch and so crucial in their green process. Do not put all of your eggs in one basket, right? Yeah. Because just like just like you as a player are kind of shopping around a little bit and looking at different institutions, those coaches are also looking at a couple of different players. Right. So I would say if you can narrow this thing down to about you know three or four legitimate schools yeah. that really fit you as a player, yeah. academically, golf-wise, schedule-wise, and um, these places all need to have the ability to really help you get better. Once you've narrowed that down, mm. then I think you're good. But at three or four, I would say it's, it's, it's good. Good, good math. Yeah. So before we get into more of the coach stuff, I just want to get a bit more like background. So obviously you're not American. You're from South Africa. Mm -hmm. You played golf there. I remember you were talking to a client earlier. You played for Houting North. Is that right? Yeah, I played for my province growing up. My province, right, yeah. just outside Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. You came out here on a golf scholarship. <coughs> you then basically finished your college golf and then got strength coaching You've done that for like eight years now yeah there was about a year gap there in between yeah. where I did something else and I just I found myself really miserable yeah because I missed the idea of college right. athletics as a whole yeah um, I missed being around not just golfers but tennis players and football players and yeah. soccer players because everybody at your institution at university within the athletic department it's a very nice it's a good mindset, yeah. it's a very positive mindset, and it's nice to know that everybody there, even though they're on different teams, they're all working towards the same goal, right? Yeah. Just one of these guys. Yeah, trophies. <laughs> and yeah, it's trophies, trophies yeah. and rings. And so I could relate very easily to soccer players and tennis players, and yeah. just because at the end of the day, we were all athletes. I find like the cool thing about the States, like especially if you're international, you see this more, I think, than the Americans, is like it's that winning culture vibe. It's like go get it attitude. Like it's never very, it's never negative here. Like if you, if you have someone who wants to be a champion, they're, they're not going to say, "Oh, you can't do it." Like I know where I'm from in England, it's like, "Oh yeah, that will be someone else, not you." And I feel the same. You get a bit of that similarness because England, South Africa, the cultures are kind of similar, not exactly, but we have similarities. And the states is just like, "We're gonna we're gonna do this. Go we're get going it for it." Yeah, go like get it. It, it gives you that confidence that you kind of sometimes lack in your home systems. I love the idea of. Um just being able to go go do you right? yeah the more the harder you work the better it's going to become and there's nothing that's going to stand in your way other than you yeah and so it was always nice to be around other people that was just we can do this we can do this there was never any like you said there was never any negativity yeah so like one of the things like i've noticed over the last 10 years of been doing this is you know a lot of a lot of athletes ask me well, why can't i do this myself right and i'm like you can but do you know what the statistics are against you so like, what I always tell them is, look, you know, could you change your car tire yourself? Yes, you could, but would you rather have a professional do it? Could you paint your house yourself? Yes, you could, but would you rather have a professional do it? And I think like, <laughs> one of the thing, I, like now I've got, you know, this is why I wanted you in this business, because I knew how well, when you talk to athletes and parents, they're just gonna like see the value so strong. I mean, I've been in coaches offices, I haven't been in your one, but I've been in other coach offices where I've seen them on the emails and they have like hundreds of emails a day. From, from athletes all around, not just golf, but all sports, right? And realistically, do you actually even email all those people? Like, you were a coach, did you actually spend it's the time so to It's so funny that you bring this up because literally five minutes ago, I was sitting with Joe and Lloyd and the boys talking about that exact same situation. Yeah. And I would like to be able to, at the end of this whole thing and 40 years down the road, be able to look back yeah. and go, oh, I missed that player and that player and that player because you know, I was at a tournament, or I, you know, I just had so many emails that for some reason I'm human, I make a mistake, and I missed a kid that could have transformed my program. Right. So right, he ends right. up going somewhere else, and then beats me there. Yeah. And so I wonder if you know, if you go look back on this thing, how many of the good ones did you actually miss? Because it happens, people slip through the cracks. Yeah. But if I'm calling you, you get that athlete straight away. You get the information. We have a conversation about it. I can tell you all about it. You'd always pick up that phone call because you know who we are, right? So if you called me about a player... Like if I did it as an agency, like ASM, we're calling you. You, you see me, Chris Fidel's calling me from ASM. 
that's going to get answered but an email from anybody might not your percentages increase dramatically yeah from a phone call because what's going to happen is you're going to call if I don't answer I know I'm going to call you back right right and then the conversation starts hey where are you at for this year what do you have available what are you looking for is yeah. there somebody that you might be interested in and now I'm like okay hang on he knows my program yeah if he's calling me there's a reason why yeah okay hang on let me look at this kid whether I've got a spot or not, I at least need to educate myself and know who this kid is. Right, right. But if it's just an email from a kid and it's not worded very well or it doesn't have what I'm looking for right from the get-go, then I might not go do my homework on it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think that's what happened to me when I was trying to get recruited. Like, you know, I think you only realized today how good of a player I was back in the day. <laughs> you looked at my golf clubs, you're like, they're tiny. They're blades, they're man. Really Tightest blades. Tiny, yeah. I used to whack those things like 200 yards in my life, seven iron, man, but not anymore. But um, I, you know, I, was, I was playing for England. I was playing all across Europe, all the, the major stuff. And I wouldn't say I was the best, but I was pretty good. And I should have been in a you know, top D1 program, but because I left it too late, didn't know what I was doing. I missed out a lot of opportunities and I was just emailing coaches and hoping to get a response and I wasn't writing the right things I wasn't saying the right things I wasn't I just didn't understand it and I you know I ended up getting different offers because I came out here and, and a coach uh, from the Faldo series who was at the, the golf academy at the Orlando he has there was walking by saw my golf and said hey do you play college golf I was like no I'm trying to get in and he knew two guys he knew um, Notre Dame and he knew uh, Bowling Green and then literally like Three days later, the Bowling Green coach flew down and watched me play. And he gave me a scholarship right there. He was like, you got a full ride, you're in. No, he gave, sorry, so it was uh, 90%. I had to pay like 15 grand. Um, I had to also pay like some fees that they had for the tuition and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, that's great. I can't really afford that. Like I needed to be around the 5,000 or better mark to get in, right? Because I was, you know, single mum. We didn't have like bags of cash to get a scholarship. So he was like, okay, look, I'll connect you with some other schools. Like we can do a JC option for a year, then we can get you later year later and then he could then give me the full ride with his budget I was like sweet let's just make it happen but the only reason I got opportunity was because someone knew that coach mm -hmm. like he knew him he called him and he was like hey you got to check out this player and then coach respects that guy boom he's here within three days watching me play in Orlando so you've been doing this for 10 years right yeah now give me a completely completely unbiased if you did not run into that gentleman yeah and you sent an email yeah to the coach of Bowling Green Two things. One, okay, he might have emailed you back. Yeah. But do you think you would have gotten a plane and flown down to watch you play golf? No, no three way. Three days later. No way he would have come and watched me play golf. So there you go. The, the connection was made from you to him through somebody else yeah. who happened to see you play golf. And because this guy, this coach, whoever, had, was credible, and, and, and the Bowling Green coach thought that he could add value and he trusted him. Yeah. That's why he then spends the time away from his family. Because I, I would like people to know that recruiting takes a lot of time. Yeah. You've got to, you know, if you're doing what's best for your program, it takes a lot of time because you can't miss. So that guy needs to then basically give up time with his family and spend money out of his budget, etc. And then he comes down and, and watches you play golf. But if you just yeah. sent him an email, probably wouldn't have worked. I doubt yeah. it. I don't know. I mean, most of the guys <laughs> in my team who, who you know, were in the, in the college I went to in the end, they also were in a similar spot. They tried the big programs, didn't work out. I mean, I think realistically, if you're doing it yourself, unless you're like a super, super good, like top 100 wagger player, those coaches will come to you. Like, there's no doubt about that. But here's your problem I find with them. Because we have one now, Tiger. We have Tiger, Igor, they're in that situation, but they don't need, say, us to help connect them. What they need the help on is which program should they go to, the advice. It's the guidance. The guidance, right? Like. Getting the schools them is super, super easy. But it's like, do I go with Stanford? Do I go with OSU? Do I go with Florida State? Do I go with UCLA? Like, they don't know because the coaches are going to say that only the best stuff, right? They're not going to always bring up the stuff you don't really want the players. Like you said in, uh, in LA, the traffic. You said that there's a lot of traffic in LA versus like maybe in Colorado, there's less traffic. So that could take time away from getting to the course practice. There's these little things, I think, add up in someone's decision making that we can provide the value of. Well, I think. We can definitely, you know, make mentions of certain things. Yeah. Um, but like I also said earlier, every single program has wonderful things. Yeah. And every single program is going to have its own quote unquote drawback. And yeah. when you speak to coaches, coaches will, in the recruiting process, they'll let you know about that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
that's why the fit is so important, right? Yeah. You have to go somewhere where everything makes sense. So if you're if you're a person that let's say you're an international student and your family can't afford to buy a car yeah. for you, then having to travel to practice becomes difficult back and forth. If you can afford to buy a car, then that problem is taken care of. Um, if you need extra help in the classroom, argument's sake, and a university doesn't offer the extra tutoring opportunity that you specifically need, then that might not be the right fit for you. It doesn't mean the school isn't awesome and great right, with a great right. schedule and good golf. It might just not be what you specifically need. And so that's why the fit is so important, I think. So from your, your eight years experience of recruiting, where do you feel like most golfers are going wrong in this process? Well, I, th I think, I'm willing to say I know, <laughs> yeah. is that we as human beings in general find it really hard to assess ourselves accurately. Right. right? We all would like to think that we're a little better than what we are. And so yeah. what happens is, like in your case, when you said, I didn't really know, so I just emailed Stanford. Yeah. I just emailed... Know, name the top schools because yeah. I know so and so and so and so well, went there. I literally saw Red Tiger Woods book and saw Tiger went there, so I figured I should go. Yeah. I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm pretty good. I'm gonna email Stanford and see what they say. But if you if you sat back yeah. and, you, and you said, okay, you know what, it has to be under five grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still want competitive. Yeah. And I want a Division One program. Yeah. Okay. Now. I've not well, I'd have been much. okay with D2 if I'd known about it better. I didn't understand it. Okay, we'll use that as an example. That's yeah. a perfect example. D1, D2, five grand, yeah. great weather for me would have been a must, and competitive golf. Okay, so perfect, yeah. we'll use that as an example, right? So if you sat back and you knew that, you wouldn't have wasted your time on emailing these schools who didn't fit your profile. Okay? Mm. You would have immediately emailed some of the schools in the South, the Division Two program, or you would have emailed say a mid-major division one school in Tennessee or Georgia or something yeah where you knew that you were good enough to where you could warrant that type of a scholarship yeah, yeah and yeah. it still gives you everything that you need and you probably would have gotten it done a lot quicker than you did yeah um, but you didn't know right and so I think something that really excites me about this this position is I'm gonna get to educate and help yeah, see. and connect the athletes straight to the coach. And facilitate those conversations. But I, I think your question is, what is the biggest pitfall? And I think it is inaccurately assessing ourselves as players. Yeah. Um, we think we're good enough for this school, but we're actually not. But well, if we actually took the time to learn why we're not, we could actually do something about it. Exactly. Well, then I could find the right place. And, and we can diminish the length of this process. Um, yeah. And that makes everybody really happy. Got it. Like it, like it. Well, I would say also this. I think that I think that players are looking for a little too much. Yeah. In general, because they heard that somebody got a full scholarship somewhere. Yes, I hear that all the time. All the time. Oh, so oh Johnny! Johnny got a scholarship though. You see that? Yeah, but he's like Johnny's the third best spots. junior in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. he's like way better in the wagon and stuff. It doesn't make sense. Cause, yeah. So I beat him a couple times. You have yeah, that I, one right. I beat him over nine <laughs> holes in the dark. Yeah once and he only actually you know what he only added <laughs> seven iron and he spotted but i yeah. didn't beat him coach. yeah 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 and so that does happen yeah but no so that conversation comes up all the time and, and i think that if you are legitimately honest if you want to go especially to a competitive program yeah those coaches they take that scholarship money and they disperse it yeah across the roster because they want to be deep it's like any professional sports yeah. team at the end of the day you want depth and yeah. you want to be competitive uh, and it's a business and so you basically take what you have and you go out you make the best offers to kids who fit yeah. your program. Yeah. Golf, academics, the type of person that he is, character, and then, then lastly the financial portion has to work. You know, so you know, this is obviously your first day. I mean you've been working with us now for two weeks remotely because mm -hmm. you're moving from Colorado here, so this is your first week in office now. Uh, I already learned in this time we had together on a few phone calls, a couple things I was like, damn the way you say that is is, is much easier for a client to understand. Like I, I wrote it down, you probably saw me doing it earlier, I can't find my notes now. You called it like um, the SATs, the power, how do you say it? You're like, when you super score them? That's it, super score. Like, we never say that. We just <laughs> say you can just take it again. I'm well, like, oh, that's cool, super score, I like that. So basically, you know? the super score is easy. What happens yeah. is if you take it, say you take the SAT twice, Yeah. they'll take your highest math and your highest book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll put them together. They might not have been on the same SAT. Yeah. 
but you put them together, you combine super, the best scores. You yeah. super score. Yeah. yeah, like we always tell clients that, but we just say you can just retake the test. But I love the super score analogy. Well, well what happens it's, is it's, per, it's, it's the right it's the right word for what it is. Well, because what happens a lot with international yeah. kids when English isn't your first language, yeah. is you kill the math part. Of it, yeah, right? but in English, they and then the English isn't the, the isn't necessarily where you want it the first time yeah and so now you tell people hey, you got to take it the second time like well what if i screw up on the math part this yeah, time yeah 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 well yeah. now you can tell them don't even worry about the math part you've killed it yeah yeah just do just focus just on english focus only. really hard on the ma on the verbal and yeah. the language and the com and the and the reading part of it and you're going to be fine now i do know that certain schools some schools don't yeah so again do your research right. have people do the research for you um but those are just the little little things that people need to avoid in this process, and that's why we are here, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. Let's go. Oh, into okay, cool, yeah. Let's go into that. So, like, you know, with ASM, you know, you've joined us now. I mean, why did you want to work with ASM? I mean, obviously, I've known you for a couple of years, but we're not like best mates. It's not like we go for beers and stuff like that. I mean, we just work together professionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's other agencies out there, but what drew you to us? I mean, I think because did you call me asking if we're still recruit? I remember mean, I try to recruit you to work with us. A year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and then you weren't ready to give up coaching yet. And then I think you reached out to me. Are we, are we still looking? I was like, I'll find you a spot. Like I, I was like, I, I will I, find I, you a spot. I, I, I think what happened work. was this. Um, <laughs> so, I've I've seen a lot of these recruiting companies. Yeah, I've yeah. Dealt with a lot of them, and um, you guys just came across as extremely professional. Yeah. Uh, and you guys actually knew something about my program, and I, I always felt that when you called it was something that was going to add value whether it would work at the time or not yeah. but it was always value and so I know we had the conversation about 18 months ago or whatever and me and my wife really wanted to get back to the east coast and I started thinking and I think we spoke sometime in March or April about a player yeah. again um, yeah I think that kid was from Holland yeah yeah I think I know another Holland kid yeah and so in any case I, yeah. I started racking my brain and I was just like hey what do I like about coaching I like recruiting I like placement I like helping and and me and my wife sat down and I just like hey what do you think you can do where you can really use your skill set yeah um, and the day I called you I was actually calling you something different now that I think about it something completely different we started talking about just the company as a whole and where you guys were at oh was it because we were developing our coach uh, kind coaching of advisory panel, council yeah coaching thing. panel and you yeah. know what it just it hit me at the time and I was like listen if you guys are looking yeah then why don't we do this thing? Yeah, and we yeah, do yeah. it and we do it right and so I don't know I think you guys just have a vision for what this needs to look like well I, I look Big at it picture. like when I play college golf because I see a lot of these young kids like I'd say 95% I talk to they want to be a pro but yet they have no idea how difficult that is actually going to be right so first you've got to there's two ways you can be a pro one you can come to the US and go to college and the second way you can just turn pro but I say to every family that says I'm thinking about turning pro at 18 years old, cool, who is your sponsor? Because realistically, when you turn pro at 18, you need to start spending some money, yeah. right? And to get on a tour and get your card, and you know, if you don't win the first couple of times, you have to keep paying to get back on. So they don't really think like that. And realistically, I have friends who did that, like didn't go to college, just turned pro. They easily spent over three years about $250,000 on like, trips tournaments caddy fees coaching um you know hotel fee all these things add up they made some money but they lost more money they made probably like 80 90 thousand on average over tournament winnings but they lost a heck of a lot more but then some of them did get their card in the fourth year and some of them just quit and they went into pga coaching and did something else right now college you can basically do four years of training practicing playing at a high level and it can cost you nearly zero it could. If you yeah. find the right place, yeah. it could cost you nearly zero. And if you look at the amount of guys on tour right now yeah. who are winning at the age of 22... Ah, oh, very few. I, very few, but the number is still dramatically increasing. Yeah. So you take... I mean, Colin Marikawa was already one. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matthew Wolf's already one. Yeah. Victor Hovland is going to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so... I, and the reason why I bring this up is, is because of these... But those kids went in college. These 22 year olds, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? They are so much more prepared for professional golf yeah. after college. Yeah. Because colleges, Division One, Division Two, NAIA schools, at the very, very top level, 
they run these things mm. like you're a little professional. Yeah. You get mental health counselors, and you get weight training, and you get your personal trainer, and you get food and nutrition, and you have people that make sure your schedule, class, and golf and sleep is right. So that by the time that you graduate, the foundation's been laid. Yeah. Um, and you're also 22 and not 18, and you are just more capable from a maturity standpoint you know, to, to, to be able it. to handle well, this. Would, would you agree college golf is like being a professional golfer, you're just not being paid? Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you're going to school. You, yeah, you're going to school. And, and like, you're going to school. Because for what I found college golf was like every single week is like a new competition when you're in season. Mm -hmm. And we had to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice. We had to do um, qualifying. You know who Mike Hagen is? Yeah, he's yeah. at Arkansas State now. Yeah, he was up my coach. Oh, cool, was, uh, awesome. Was, yeah, he's a great guy. So he had his, like, Monday through, but he wasn't a coach who recruited me. It was um, Brad, what was his name? He was at Texas, uh, I think it was at North Texas for a while. Brad, Brad Strachey. Yes, Brad Strachey. He's at North Texas now. Is he still there? Yeah. He, so he's the reason why I chose to go to Hills, because I just loved, like, his attitude towards being a golf coach. He was very, like, strict, and I just wanted to try it out. But then he left... When he recruited me, and Hagen came Mike in, came in, and I was like, "Okay, well, this was not the coach why I came." But well, Hagen was good in the end; well, he was a really good coach. It's good that you bring that up real quick yeah. because that is why it is so important yeah. to pick an institution yeah. that you like, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. want to fit at, because players and coaches are inevitably going yeah. to come and go. Exactly, but yeah. the school is still going to be there. Right, right, right. That's why you got to pick the right school, the facilities, yeah, the schedule. See, I didn't think of it like that. Because coaches <laughs> are going to come and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you were 18 years old. No, I didn't know. And, and I you didn't, didn't have the information. Yeah. And like, so, but yeah, Hagen had us like Monday through Thursday qualifying, 18 holes of golf, best five schools make team, other five schools don't make in. If we sometimes have a reserve, six spot comes, right? And it was repeat every other week. Doesn't matter if you won the tournament. No, if you won the tournament, he'll give you an exemption, one week exemption. So you could like screw up in practice and still make it through. But it was always like, he tried to make it like tour golf which was awesome for us, because it was like, this is what it's gonna be like if we turn pro. And you start realizing how tough it's actually gonna be, because you'd have the other guys in team, you knew roughly who was gonna to be top three, but then the last three spots were kind of always mixture between a couple other players. The last two guys never really got anywhere, right? They were kind of walk-ons anyway. So we were fighting really for like eight of us trying to make it a team. And the first three months was tough. Like I struggled with that adjustment, but then after three months I got into it, I was always kind of like second, third on a team, so it was doing all right. So it was, it was a, you know, it's a transition. But when you get higher up the ladder and go to you know, bigger schools, it's just going to get harder and harder. And then you make the championships, you've got to play it with everyone. So I feel like if you can't hack it in college, it's going to be tough when you turn pro. So I'm very passionate about this whole yeah. turning pro early or after college or just turning pro in general. Because yeah, 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 yeah. people have no idea how good those dudes on tour really are. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is it's... It turns into a profession the moment you turn pro. Yeah. It's not just fun hit and giggle with your buddies anymore. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. now have to go and pay the bills. And so you, for a profession, chose to do this. Yeah. Those guys, for a profession, are choosing to play professional golf. Yeah. It's not a game anymore. No. It's, it's now full-time work. It's yeah. a job, right? And so golf, being a professional golfer, it, it, one of the reasons why I think it's so hard is not only are those guys really good, but there's only so many tour cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just because there's 500 new 18-year-olds every year that are really good at golf doesn't mean there's all of a sudden 500 more tour cards. Yeah. There's still only X amount. Yeah. That's why that number, top 125 in the PGA Tour, is so and, important. And, and you're going up against guys who've been there for 10 years, 15 years. I mean, Tiger's still do winning you, at 40-something. Do you think a guy like Zach Johnson yeah. It's just going to give you his job. No. <laughs> hey, you know what? I've won I've won a couple majors. Yeah. I've won the PGA Tour. I arguably have a world of Hall of Fame career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even forty yet. Yeah. I still have some of my best golf ahead. Yeah. Just sit down. Like yeah. this is my job. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there's only so many. Yeah, that's what you gotta realize. I remember I was in I was in Dubai with uh, Miguel Jimenez mm -hmm. and uh, I was speaking to him because we had a golf function together there. And I said to him, like, you know, how was it for you turning pro? What was your kind of pathway? He goes, oh, for the first three years, it was like, struggle, struggle, struggle. And he said, the fourth year, I was just like, screw it, I'm just going to try and win everything. And he changed his mindset, and then something clicked, and he started playing really well, making cuts and getting through and winning events. 
but he nearly gave up. Like, I mean, and I think that's what's cool about our program is the support. So, like, if you come on our program and work with you know, yourself, myself, the team here, I'm super excited for them to work with you, really, because it's going to be interesting to see how the golfers work with you. You've only been doing a few already, and the results have been super fast, which is great. But the advice you can give them, like getting them ready for college golf, get them in the program, we watch them through college, see how they progress. And then as towards their like last year, connecting them with Ernie Els' management team, with Duncan on the team there. I'm gonna, we're gonna be at Ernie's on Wednesday, so we'll get you introduced to them guys. Sounds but good. you'll see that pathway. So we're trying to create that pathway for these kids where if you do the right things, we'll open doors to you and there give will you- be opportunities Yeah, down the we'll road. give you a chance. Like that didn't exist when I was doing it. It's just like, good luck. But like. But you can't, we're not just going to open every door, like you have to prove that you're worth that and you've done the things to get to that level, but it's better than having no opportunity in front of you at all. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're doing is trying to make it, give you the chance, but you've got to basically earn the chance. I think that's the right way to put it. I would say so. I yeah. mean, it's like everything, right? You've got to yeah. pay dues and show well, I mean, people if you come you can, if you come to college and you can't, you can't, you know, get anywhere, why the heck would Nike want to give you $200,000? Well, I think... And that's why college golf is so good, right? Yeah. Because we've gotten to the point where the best amateurs in the world yeah. almost exclusively can play college golf. Yeah. If you look at the PGA Tour, if you watch the PGA Tour broadcast on a Sunday, yeah. look at the logos next to oh, the yeah, names like every of the player. guys inside the top 25 or 40, yeah. whatever, however far they scroll down. And yeah. it's college, 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 college. And, and you'll see Division one, Division two, Junior College, yeah. NAIA, you'll see Division three guys up there. You can be very, very good, yeah. no matter where you play college golf. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so what I was getting at is the college golf thing is really important because you get to see where you are. Mm -hmm. You get to test yourself against the best amateurs in the world every single time you tee it up. And, and so what you're getting at with yeah. the Nike thing is, hey, Nike now knows where you are. Yeah. They know where you fit. If you never played college golf, and argument's sake, say you were really, really good, the exposure isn't there. Yeah, yeah, correct. I mean, the Golf Channel is now pumping money into college golf. Yeah, they were I mean, at the uh, Nationals. I was at Nationals who, this year, and I saw them there doing live interviews. Who legitimately thought five years ago, yeah. we we're going to watch college golf on TV. on TV on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Yeah, no, it's all on TV. It's, it's incredible where this thing is going. But that's, that's the benefit of playing out here in college you, can, oh, you get I think that's the biggest advantage the more than the education and the, and the experience is having the opportunity especially if you want to be a pro to get seen and get known oh, absolutely because if you're not known no one's gonna no one like we have this business consultant he says if no one knows you no one can flow you right <laughs> so like if, if, if no one knows you in golf no one can flow you any sponsorship dollars so you need to get known and I think okay yeah we can open a door for you through Ernie's network and help you with that but, and we can also connect you with Faro's people. We obviously work with Sonic and his team as well. But if you're not known, why are their management teams going to want to help you, right? If you haven't got anything to work with, like what have you done that's interesting? Why would Nike give you 200 grand versus this guy over here who's number 10 player in the country? So I think that's what people have to understand. It's like you have to build a brand for yourself with results and, 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 and ex uh, justify why you're worth money to a sponsor. And basically what you're getting at is college golf is going to give you that opportunity. 100%. If you're good enough, you're going to get noticed. 100%. And any division, again, I can't stress that enough. If you are really good, it doesn't matter where you play. Yeah. Because good golf is good golf is good golf. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, look, we, uh, we've been uh, talking more than, say, our average podcast. But I was super excited about this one because it was really like something that's really close to me. And I think this opens up a very exciting period for golfers on our program because literally I think our golf program is the best in the world right now. I mean, you've got ex-golf ex athletes on our program who work with our team members. We've got a former Division One golf coach. We've got Ernie Els and Sig Faldo partnership. I mean, what else could we do to make this better? We have to really think of something. But we're going to. We're, we're going to make think, it better. Oh, we, we always, we think, are gonna make we it always think how we can get better and better. I think that's why we keep getting better. But right now, it's an incredible opportunity for a golfer who joins us you know, we, if we can't get him a scholarship, no one can. That could be our new slogan. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe we ended on that. If we can't hey, do it, no one can. I've only worked you for a day, yeah. literally in the office. Yeah. I'm going to refrain from uh, making statements quite yet, <laughs> but I'm sure that we're going to get there. Also, you mentioned something a touch earlier. Yeah. As you said, we're not best mates. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. 
But I hope by the end of this thing, we can actually oh, drink sure. a bit together. Oh, yeah, well, of course we're yeah, going absolutely. to. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was just so saying because in the past we weren't <laughs> like it wasn't like we always like go out and stuff. Like we just no, it's knew because each you other. took every kid I ever wanted and <laughs> sent them to a different school. That's why. Well, you didn't give them enough options, man. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't give them the whole package they wanted. Well, you know what? Your you biggest were, problem was the you, weather. You Colorado. were just good enough to actually go find them more money somewhere else. No, because I'd never get one kid just one. Like, when you spoke about don't put all your eggs in one basket, that's what I never did. Like, when, when I'd done the recruitment, because you're basically going to head over the golf recruitment now, right? I've done it for many years, and I'm going to have you, because I need to work on the platform development. We have something really cool coming for the company. It's just amazing. You probably saw a bit of that mm-hmm. platform, right? So that's what I, I've got to take on that position now with the investors that we have coming in. But you're kind of taking in that golf realm and you're more than qualified to do that. But what I, I think is that you know this and I know this is you never just go after one school. You can't, you, if, a, if a client's paying you money and you put all your eggs in one basket, if that falls through, what are you going to do? And I, that's what a lot of agencies do. Money back. Yeah, of course you've got to do that. But a lot of agencies, that's all they do. They just go after one program because they know someone there and that's it. And they, they don't know how to build a new relationship with a new coach, right? So obviously you're doing it for 10 years, you build a lot of relationships, but you also, you know if you want to get the best for your client, you have to get at least three to six offers. The, at least three to six schools interested in them. Because you want to build leverage too. Like, again, this is why you should work with an agency versus doing it yourself. Because when I was do, trying to get myself a career, I'm just going off to one or two schools, hoping I'm gonna get in, doesn't work out. But let's say they all were interested. Would I know how to play leverage? Like, would I know, let's say I wanted Stanford, and Stanford, like, we're only going to give you 75%. And that's where I really want to go, but I can't afford that extra 25%. But I've got their competitor, UCLA, and I've got their Arizona, and I've got maybe Florida State interested, right? If I know how to play the game, I could use another school to get a full ride and go back to Stanford and say, hey, I'm, I'm interested. Could, but they're going to give me a full ride. If you can't get me, I can't come. You know, you can, you can play the recruitment game. But you can only do it with numbers, though. True. You can't do it with the exit on your yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, but you have to also have everything you need to make sure it happens. You can't, you can't play the game if you haven't got the right SATs and the or right results. Or yeah. Well, you know what? So you have to understand. Like when you say it's evaluating how good you really are, you have to know. But how do you know if you've never done this before? I always tell new clients, how many time, how many uh, golfers have you placed? Well, never. Okay, so you're going to do something you've never done before and expect an amazing outcome. Good luck with that. And it is, <laughs> and it is I mean? potentially one of the biggest decisions yeah. you're going to make you, in your life. And you can't redo it. You get one shot, one opportunity. If you mess this up, that's it. You've messed it up. You can't, like, at least in, like, if you change your car tire, paint house, you can redo it again. But you can't do this again. So why would you risk your future for something that's so important to you that you've been doing for so long to get to and try risk it to do it for free? I'm going to steal a line from one of my best, best friends in coaching, right? Go for it. A uh, baseball coach. Yeah. I overheard, I, I'd been coaching for about um, three months maybe. And I was young and super gun ho about this thing. Yeah. Uh, and he walked by my office one day with a couple of recruits and I overheard him say the following thing. He said, Guys, I want you to understand that you're going to look at this college thing for four years, right? But it's not a four year decision, it is a rest of your life decision. Yeah. The friends you're going to make the wife you're gonna meet, the degree you're gonna get, the man you're gonna be when you graduate, the alumni, all of those opportunities that come with picking the right place is yeah. going to influence the rest of your life. Yeah. Please do not take this lightly. That's all he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He just said, please do not take this lightly, not call me, not nothing, just please do not take this lightly. And uh, both of those kids ended up at that university and uh, had wonderful careers. And yeah, like I said, I'm gonna I, I use that line all the time. Yeah, I like that. Because it just it yeah. just hits. You know, it's like no, it makes you realize, hang on. Yeah. Hang on, this is important. And and if it's that important, like you say, why would you do that on your own, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife is having a baby. I am not delivering my first child. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Trust me, you don't. Because want to. I don't. I was there like because a year I ago. don't know how to. Why <laughs> yeah, would yeah. I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I've got medical and a doctor. Well, look, and look, I, I think one of the reasons is 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 money. People, people are like, you know, I can't afford your service fee. I can't afford your your your, your fees. Fair enough. Like we, we have payment plans as well, though, right? We can figure it out. We can figure it out. But that's why we're building a platform that will. You, then you haven't got that excuse because that fee is really small. I mean, it's like a, it's like a Netflix subscription fee, and you're gonna have to do more work yourself. But at least it gives you the blueprint and gives you the guide of what. All the information is there. Yeah, you you won't get us picking the phone up and like 
you know, that's going to, but you're paying for the value because we know these people, they trust us. Like, that's the value you're getting. And, you know, you have to justify, look, do you want someone who knows exactly what they're doing? These coaches trust. Oh, okay, you that one. Or do you want to, yeah, we've got some camera issues. Actual wife, you want to answer that? We're nearly finished. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just with the camera. We have to press record again now. Oh, screw it. I'll just use this one. It's fine. That's fine. I'm that up. Sorry, my wife is calling me, and uh, it was meant to be on the airplane, but it's not even meant to work. Anyway, yeah, she's calling you because it's 5.04, and, no, and she to wants to know I, where I, you had I, 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 I have to end this, and I have to get it going. Now. <laughs> I've got to be home five thirty. She's going out. I'm going to look after the kids tonight. So. Good. But um, where was I? Yeah, um, you know, like we have a platform, and that's going to give you the blueprint and make this process super easy for you. But anyway, look, get in touch with us if you're looking for a golf scholarship. Want to learn more? If you're a male or a female. And you want to speak with Alric directly in a team here, uh, your email is alric at asmscholarships.com. Correct. Um, or you can literally go on our website, www.asmscholarships.com, click on the application form, complete a free application, we'll give you a free consultation and see if we can help you guys out. I Alric, think we can. Fist pump, man. Let's do this, man. Let's bring this together and awesome. take care, guys. See ya. Okay. Stay tuned.